Hi, and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick. And my name is Chris. And Nick, what do we got in store today? Today, we've got a whole host of IT related issues. Um, we've got uh, Ripple and uh, the patent for XRP powered on demand <laughs> liquidity. <laughs> There's a huge lag, Chris, between uh, you obviously hearing me. Uh, you then responding to me, and then obviously the guys hearing that. So we're going to have a few problems this evening, no doubt. Um, but we're going to be mainly talking about you know things like XRP, the on-demand liquidity, cross-border payments, um, and what's happening there in terms of a patent. We'll have a look at the market, see how the market's been progressing. We'll also no doubt get into our live stream, see how everyone is doing. We'll obviously have a look at a few charts here and there as well, Chris. So I think it's going to be a pretty chilled out uh, and relaxing um, Friday evening stream and um, give or take a few IT issues. <laughs> we'll wait for him to catch up. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at a white <laughs> screen. I'm looking at a white screen at the minute, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Chris is always so far, far, far behind. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take control of the stream and Chris will then eventually catch up as, as usual uh, in this particular stream. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to obviously just give you guys a gentle reminder that if you enjoy the stream uh, and you enjoy just how far behind Chris is, go ahead and smash that like button. And rumor has it that uh, the more likes there are, the more Chris becomes live with us. And it's fantastic to have him live with us, I think so anyway. Um, and if by chance you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the various live streams and videos that we put out here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, let's, um, let's take control. Let's jump on over uh, to the markets and see what's been going on there and then get into some XRP um, ODL news. Right, so we have a 1.6. <laughs> it's a bit late. Uh, a 1.468 um, trillion dollar market cap, which is uh, heating up nicely. We have trading volumes of 201 billion dollars. Bitcoin dominance is slipping a little bit down to 60.3, which is a good indication that the alts are starting to take over a little bit. And Chris, we have 8,436 cryptocurrencies. Obviously, we are not invested in that many. A fraction of those. Um, yeah, ridiculously, so many cryptocurrencies at the moment. Um, so let's take a look at the list of projects here that we are invested in, and there's quite a list of them, and uh, see how they've been performing today. Some areas, there are some dips to potentially be purchasing, and other areas, we're just a lot more wealthier, right? Um, so we have Bitcoin basically flat here, 0 0.07 uh, in the green. Ethereum's 3.6% up, which I think might be a new all-time high. Let's um, quickly check that. Um here, just make sure that the all-time high, uh, all-time high of the 12th. So yes, that happened 33 minutes ago. Um, so fantastic for Ethereum, still doing well. Um, just come back here again. We can see that Cardano is 4% down today. Um, so if you were looking to get some more ADA, then today's a good day. Um, XRP's had a good day today, Chris. 9.5% um, uh, up, which is fantastic. Polkadot again, 15.8 and a strong movement there. Very, a lot of these coins have had a, a good move later on this afternoon, uh, which is fantastic. Litecoin's $193 um, and 2.6% up. We have Chainlink at 8.9, Stellar at 13.3, and obviously Stellar's doing really well recently with that breakout that we spoke about earlier. Uh, we have Avalanche at 6.3. We have VeChain, absolutely amazing here with VeChain, isn't it, Chris? 30.2%. And uh, for those who don't know, VeChain is Chris's biggest bag. Uh, so he'll be uh, absolutely thrilled to see VeChain doing so well at the moment. Uh, we have Theatre 0.1. Am, am I live with you? Are you live? Can you hear me? Am I, am I, am I, am I back in the room? Oh, uh, I guess that everyone's been well, smashing up well, that light well, blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll figure Possibly, that out. Or the, wife, or the wife's finished her video call. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've got Elrond Crest 0.5% up. We have 19.1 for the graph. We've Algorand, really strong movement on Algo here, 38.4%. Um, uh, Zcash 0.4, uh, Zilliqa 0.6, Hedera 5.9. Um, so that's good strong movement as well. We have uh, some fantastic movements on um, RSR, uh, so reserve rights, 21%. Harmony 1, uh, really good today as well. 14.9, Fetch AI 10.4, Singularity Net, couldn't be happy with uh, what's going on there at the minute. So yeah, 20.3, 
Anchor is uh, 7.1. V4, Chris. <laughs> V4. 23.9. It's a good, strong movement as well. Uh, Polymath, um, 4.8. And API 3, 22. Point three. So yeah, API 3 is doing well and I think it's got such potential for it in the future as well. Um, we've got Solve here as well, slightly down uh, 0 0.3. So um, pretty wealthy in a few spots. I need really two projects, Solve and Cardano, that are in the red. Um, so everything's looking pretty good um, on, on our projects at the moment, Chris. I'm going to assume he's not live. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's, been a, it's been a good day. Like, you know, I've... I've... No, am I, am I not? <laughs> it's all right. Super delayed. You're, you're 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 still delayed. It's all right. You'll catch up. Um, so let's get on into into this, right? So Ripple patents XRP powered on demand liquidity network um, for cross border transactions. Um, so Ripple has patented a network computing system for its XRP powered cross border. Um, payment product on demand liquidity. The United States Patent and Trademark Office uh, officially granted the patent on the January on January the 26th, right, according to the documents filed. Um, so Ripple's patent explains that ODL helps banks avoid keeping money tied up in corresponding banking, a um, method of processing remittances. So, you know, here's the quote. So current estimates indicate that uh, on the order of 10 trillion US dollars in value is used as parked float sitting in Nostro or other you know, correspondent accounts throughout the world. Furthermore, any pair of banks that do not have an agreement regarding such exchanges must use other banks to do so, which um, can drive up transaction fees and complexity. With the advert um, of digital currencies and decentralized ledgers, the use of Nostro accounts may be largely eliminated. Um, releasing the parked money uh, therein um, to be deployed by the banking institutions accordingly, as described herein. A computing system is provided herein uh, that implements a cross-medium transaction service by leveraging the use of a digital currency or ledger, decentralized distributed ledger, to reduce, oh, sorry, to replace the need for clearing houses and slash or Nostro Verso um, accounts. The cross-medium transaction system operates to provide on-demand liquidity for cross medium exchanges such uh, that fund settlements can occur at any time within seconds or fractions of a second um, as opposed to several days in the current implementations. Um, so this is absolutely massive news if we start thinking about what's happening with some other players trying to get into this cross border section to be able to have um, you know, a patent approved here for ODL it's, it's really really good stuff and a good thing here is it doesn't specifically mention XRP it just says a digital asset which will also prevent some competitors potentially you know utilizing the same kind of technology um, you know without making some kind of uh, major alterations which is really good so the subject of XRP's utility is a key question in the US um, so I should just say the SEC lawsuit against Ripple uh, which accuses the company obviously illegally selling the digital asset uh, as unregistered securities fun fact uh, the SEC did not request a judge to actually you know class um, XRP as a security so therefore they really don't believe currently um, XRP is a security otherwise they would have requested that um, so I'm pretty confident in XRP being you know <laughs> being going you know, really utilized in the future um fully clear that it is not a security but ripple net general manager ashish um says the odl powered uh, about 3 million transactions and handled 2.4 billion dollars in notional volume in 2020 um so you know that adds to uh, adds the product expanded to 18 new countries and was a part of 15 new deals um, after the SEC filed a complaint against the uh, France San Francisco startup in uh, late December, which is just, I just find hilarious, Chris, the fact that they signed 15 new new clients after the lawsuit uh, does make me does make me chuckle. Um, so yeah, I think this is really good news, oh, yeah. guys, um, for for XRP, for Ripple, and for on demand liquidity as a, as a product. I think um, those people who were trying to move in, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Who was it? Um, which bank was it that was trying to do this? Now it's just acting frozen. <laughs> it's okay if you don't know the, the answer to the question, Chris, you don't have to respond. That's perfectly fine. Um, so <laughs> are you back with us now? Maybe. Uh, I'm, Maybe I'm kind of back with you. I'm
am I actually like delayed still or what? You you are still delayed, yeah. yeah. But um, you might just have to carry on for a bit. <laughs> but Chris, this is the this is your favourite part of the of the live stream. This is where we get into the live chat, go through a few questions, and answer uh, answer as best we can. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to do that i you know it's gonna be super delayed but i yeah i was gonna say go for it uh and uh i'm just gonna like laugh to myself with uh, with everyone else here who says you're playing possum you're just pretending the whole time but you know let's um go for it go read a few out and uh i'll, I'll take over <laughs> eventually but i find it quite quite, quite funny <laughs> And as always, guys, uh, make sure you smash up that like button. Well, it I think I might be catching up because... Uh... <laughs> it's like watching Stephen Hawking uh, respond to questions. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> should, I, should, I, should I hang up? Should I hang <laughs> up and, and try again, Nick? Will, you, um, will that work? Yeah, yeah, you can try again. You can try again. We'll we'll get you. We'll get Chris back. We'll um we'll hang up on him and yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let me let me hang up on him. See if we can get him back in a moment. See, yeah, hoddle hoddle, Chris. Bless him. Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> but we won't be up in a moment. And as always, guys, you know, if you do find it, uh... <laughs> here he is. Let's see if we can bring him up. Let's. Uh... Are you okay? Um, <laughs> it's so not live. Uh, poor old Chris. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over the live chat because clearly Chris, um, Chris does no intention of joining me live this evening. He's oh, just uh, going to be playing possum. It's just going to be all over the place. But let's let's get into the live chat. Let's see what's going on. Uh, we see some fantastic people have joined us this evening. We've got 201 people in the live stream. So if you do enjoy the show, do find it a little bit informative, maybe more entertaining this evening, smash that like button. Show us uh, your appreciation. And also, um, apparently, rumor has it, by smashing that like button, you help Chris and his internet connection um, perform better. Um, but let's get into the live chat, see what's going on here. So we've got... Um, this is like watching Stephen Hawkins uh, respond to, to questions. I love that. That's from Wayne. Um, you've got uh, yeah, GRT and NU, yeah, um, Foresight, yeah, next. 50 to 100x incoming. That would be nice, wouldn't it, from Peter there? I mean, come on, Chris. I mean, you're really letting Alex down, I have to say. <laughs> uh, show us what you're made of. That's what he's saying there. Um, what else have we got? Anyone I'm have sorry, any questions, guys. drop them into the... Just let me know if I catch up with you. <laughs> I am working with a cardboard cutout. <laughs> I love it. It's funny. Um, but uh, let's see what if we've got any good questions. If you have anything you want us to have a look at, drop it down in the live chat. We'll uh, we'll go through. <laughs> it's funny. He's he's he's, bad. he's got about a thirty second delay on him this evening. Um, let's see if we can get him a little bit faster. But uh, yeah, drop any questions you have in the live chat. We'll have a look at a few charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the XRP chart. I think Chris. Um, have a look at what's going on with XRP specifically, and then get into you know, maybe some others. So drop your questions down, we'll have a look, um, and we'll go through those. So let's just have a look at the XRP chart to start with. So XRP to the USD on the daily here. Um, and we have a Fibonacci retracement from the low level here of the 2nd of February, um, and that high level, which was the pump and dump scam of the um, 1st of February. Okay, so we have the 1st, then the 2nd, high and low, and where we're trading today. So we had some pretty good movements in the last uh, few days. And then we can obviously see that with all of these green candles, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper than that. We can see the volume was increasing, actually decreased um, for yesterday's candle. And we hit that barrier here at 53.1 uh, cent. Um, but uh, nonetheless, today the volume increased and we were able to push up, but we did find resistance up here um, towards that 618 Fibonacci level. Um, and I did see a comment earlier about the 702 saying that I've been watching um, Blockchain Backer. Yes, so Blockchain Backer, I love his videos. So yes, I did uh, did have to have to add the 702 uh, Fibonacci level in, 
in respect to the blockchain backer. And um, so if you'd like your XRP chart analysis, do recommend checking out the blockchain backer. Um, but we can obviously see on here as well, volume's doing good today. MACD is obviously just following the RSI. The RSI is up here now, um, just above that uh, 70 level. So it's overbought on the daily chart. But let's have a look at XRP down to the four hours. And the four hourly chart shows us uh, how that volume has been volatile and actually kind of been building up quite nicely here. Okay, but it has started to flatten out in the last eight hours or so. So um, here we can see that motion, um, you know, the, the price correction. But actually, you know, with the flattening of the volume, if we can get that volume to decrease, we can hold this position up here without doing too much major damage. But we did obviously have a test on the 50% retracement zone here, this red candle. Um, and it actually hit that level and bounced up. So there's good strong support here at 54.3 cents. So um, hopefully we won't have to test that, but if we do turn back, we do have that as a good support level. We can see that on this four hourly chart that uh, we are still overbought. We bounced off of the 70 level and came up to about 74, 75, and currently we're about 71. So still overbought on XRP. So we could do with some volume correction here correct down a little bit and then shoot on back up again. So there still looks to be quite a lot of momentum in the four hour chart here, but let's take a look at the hourly, see if that shows us anything different. Yeah, the volumes are very flat here. You can see that quite clearly, um, but the RSI is now corrected. We are actually, you know, just above 60. So we could swing this back up again if needed, but the volumes are high at the moment. Um, so therefore we really want to see that volume decrease, correct the RSI a little bit lower so that we can swing the volume back up, swing back up to the overbought area and break into some new price areas uh, up here. So MACD is slightly negative, but that's because we've had the correction down here on the RSI. So this particular correction um, happened here, um, but the MACD is always delayed. It always shows you after what happens on the RSI. So RSI gives you a little bit of a heads up as to what's gonna happen from a MACD point of view. Um, but yeah, volumes are too high really. They need to come down a little bit, get that volume corrected, get this RSI corrected, minimal amount of damage to the price at the moment, just sideways trading, and hopefully that'll swing on to the upside. And um, we've got strong support at two levels, 54 cent and 53 cent. Hopefully I am, you know, both of those will be good levels for us. And um, so we'll have to see how that plays out on this um, hourly chart, but also, you know, on the daily. So we'll have to see if uh, things continue the way they have been in the last sort of five days or so. Um, so yeah, XRP is looking pretty good. Um, are you yet live with us, Chris? Nope. <laughs> Still I don't know. I'm just in the process of literally like, am I not? I'm dis dis disconnecting everybody in my house off the internet <laughs> to see if that helps. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, so let's see what know. else is going on in this live chat. Uh, obviously, I'm working with a cardboard cutout. That's from Chris Walker. I love it. Um, he gets a lot of stick blessing, Chris, in the comments of the videos for being a cardboard cutout. Well, let's not do that to him on the on the on the streams as well. But um, yeah, Chris is uh, thirsty for gains. Yeah, very thirsty for gains. Um, it's like watching a um, Chinese dub movie. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it's like. Um, well, so we've got XRP price in one week. What do we think the price of XRP is going to be like in a week, Chris? Uh, any thoughts on that? Give him two seconds to catch up. Uh, <laughs> you're terrible. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I am expecting xrp to to get some really good news in the next few days so you know what the next 10 11 days i think we're going to receive some some good news and i kind of feel like everything's going to be settled not that i know any more than anybody else but you know i just think a lot of the, the the pump at the moment is is purely due to to that people trying to get in early because i think there's a lot of people that think the same yeah, I think, um, you know, if we can get past like the 702, the 786 Fibonacci levels, then we have a good strong chance of getting to 97 cent. OK, and that's the first price target on, on the chart. So we'll have to just see if that plays out, if we can get that good motion and um, to continue as it has done in the last five days. And if we can, then, yeah, we could potentially see some good prices for XRP for sure. Um, so what are we looking at for ADA? We'll get into the ADA chart in a moment. And also Algorand's come up uh, as well, Chris. So we should probably have a look at those two things as well. Um, every single stream, uh, there is one troll having a thumbs down. Yeah, there's always one. And uh, way before we even go live, um, 
Now, I, I let a few a few people slide occasionally here and there, but uh, there has been a few daily sacrifices that have been made. A few gyms have had to be cut from the channel. Um, but uh, yeah, there's some, there were some earlier that uh, we, let them, we let them survive another day, shall we say. Um, but let's get into, Chris, the ADA Cardano chart. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, should I go, whilst you're going through that chart, should I just go reboot my router? <laughs> okay, go for it. Works. One, yeah, go for it. Go for it. I'll. Uh, you can hang up, Chris, and yeah. um, then I'll. Yeah, give me a call when you're free. <laughs> yeah. There we go. It's okay. Let me just uh, let me just remove Chris and uh, and instead bring up the nice looking Cardano chart. So we have found a bit of a top, which is good, um, and it's good because I can now set this level here. Okay, so we can now reset our Fibonacci. Okay, so we have the low level of this Fibonacci retracement down to the 1st of February here. Um, and now we have the high level as of yesterday. So we found the top, we have the retracement coming in, and um, how low this thing might go. So there's three key levels of this Fibonacci that we might be wanting to pay attention to um, in terms of a retracement. We can see the 618, okay, that would be 72 cent. We have the 50% retracement that basically takes it down to 65 cent. And then we have the 382, which takes it to 57 cents, okay? Now, uh, at the moment, it's still doing really, really well. It's not much of a retracement at all. Um, so we might not even come down to these, but those are the levels that we would typically see a retracement down to. Um, so we'll have to just watch out if we even get as low as 83.1. And uh, we can see that from uh, some of the other technicals in a moment. So we can see we're very much overbought here, okay? And the volumes are decreasing on the hour, uh, also on the day. So every day we're decreasing in volume. That's gonna help correct our RSI and pull it down. But we were as high as 91 and obviously we oversold at 70. So we have quite some traction to go before we can get back down here. Um, so the problem that we have is with the decreasing in volume, is that's going to allow us to trade sideways up here, okay, without actually hitting any of these levels. It's a problem because typically we'd want to see these get hit for a true kind of correction to be a, a part of play here. Um, so from a mathematical point of view, these are the retracements that you kind of have to hit to make sense of all of your Fibonacci um, you know, retracement zones and then all of your extensions in terms of price points. So I'm expecting it to at least kind of come down, maybe even just hit this one briefly, just so that we can shoot on up from here. Um, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Obviously we can just bounce off of here. It, it has happened in the past and it continues, but uh, typically what you see um, you know, is, is these levels. Um, so we're overbought, okay? Volumes are decreasing. That's allowing us to continue trading sideways whilst we correct this RSI. The RSI is slightly starting to dip now, which means the MACD will correct itself shortly as well. So if we pull this chart down into a four hourly view, um, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to see um, what's gone on here from the four hour point of view. And we can see that volume really spike up and start to come down quite nicely. Um, now it has actually started to increase on the two last hours here, this, this eight hour period. Um, MACD is obviously in a, a negative position after the correction from here. Um, and we are actually no longer overbought on this four hourly chart. We are about 64. So that's actually a really good sign. Um, so that just the daily side looks uh, worse than actually the four hours. The four hours is already corrected and could potentially keep us moving to the upside. But if we move this down to an hour, we're hoping to see this a little bit lower, which we are. Um, so again, we see that volume really spiking up, coming down, uh, and it's starting ever so slightly within the last hour to actually kick back up a little bit. Um, so we'll see if that's gonna be the trend, right? Because we've hit the 50 level here on this uh, RSI. Um, so now we could potentially start seeing that swing right back up again. Um, if you look at this area here where we were, right? So we came down, we actually came down to about 41 previously during this spike, um, rode it up, came back down to that 50, and then obviously we're overbought, barely touched it a couple of times, come back down and we could start to see another wave up. So um, from here, if we just look at the, the actual history of the RSI, you're always kind of getting this kind of motion occurring. Okay, and uh, what we want to do is we want to kind of capitalize on that the best we can. So being that the fact that we're down here, this is an area that we you know, has been at quite regularly since the beginning of February, we could start to see another price swing to the upside on this hourly chart, which will mean that if we go back to our daily, that actually we're just, this isn't going to come down at all. We're most likely to continue trading up here. Uh, I guess, let me find another example. 
Um, actually, there isn't one that's actually been that high for quite a while. And this was the last bull run, right? So um, you could expect that maybe we end up with this little scenario where you just keep continuously bouncing up and down in this zone. And it's getting tighter. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out in the next kind of day or so. Um, because ideally, we want to hit one of these levels so that we can get that by the dip and then, you know, shoot or not. But that might not happen. We might barely touch 83 cent. That might have been as low as it was today, right? Which would have been 87 cent. Um, but let's, um, let's take a look at what we're actually targeting on this chart. So here we are looking at $1.35 now um, based on the top of yesterday. Okay, so $1.35 is the first price target. Um, after that, it becomes $2, so $1.99 basically. Um, and then after there, you know, $2.62 and then $3.01. Okay, and again, I still think this has got more potential in it than just that, but that's now what this Fibonacci here, based on the low level from the 1st of February, the high level of the 11th of February, is indicating to us just from a mathematical point of view. So if we can, you know, potentially get a retracement in here, hit one of these key levels, I'd be more confident to know that that is exactly the top. Might not be the top though, actually the top might be up here yet. Um, and when we get that major correction in, or the correction to at least the 618, we're going to know for sure um, what's in store for Cardano. But for now, targeting 135 is the next price point. We'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, everything's looking really, really good for, for Cardano at this point. Um, so hopefully that answers uh, your question on the Cardano uh, questions there. Um, and I know everyone has, oh, the live chat's gone a bit crazy. So let's see what's, um, see what's going on here. So um why is there good news coming not sure am i missing um first haircut now connection not a great week <laughs> yeah yeah he got he got big didn't he um can i do the anchor chart yeah let's go into the anchor chart why not let's take a look at that uh anchor to the usd right so here was anchor so it's doing really well at the moment and just pull that down a little bit. We can see the volumes today have started to slowly increase. Actually, the last three days, they've been slowly increasing daily, which is nice to see. Still overbought, bouncing straight off of the, um, out off of that 70 line and that, yeah, it's doing really well from there. And we can see that we're almost at our first price target here of 2.3 cent. We got really close today, but just fell short. Um, but it is doing really, really well um, on this daily chart. So let's pull this down uh, a little bit lower into that four hourly and just see what's actually gone on here. So actually, most recently, yeah, you can see that top right there, and um, that seems to be a bit of resistance. So I'm going to quickly mark that out uh, with the horizontal line. I'm just going to pop this right there because that is a bit of resistance. We have to monitor that um, and then pull this back. So we can see the volumes were increasing and actually decreasing on this four hourly chart. So actually, the volumes are not doing so great now. Um, but the RSI has corrected, right? So we're actually, you know, on the four hourly chart, 66. So that's not too bad. MACD is still positive, but I'd expect that to actually start correcting um, as we come down. I think Chris is back with us. Let's see if I can bring him back into the into the live show with us, guys. Let's see. Hey. Are you here? Are you here, Chris? Probably still delayed. <laughs> it's probably still delayed. We'll see. I'm just going through the anchor chart, Chris. Um, and um, yeah, then I will get back into the live chat and we'll see what's going on there. Am I delayed now or am I not? You tell me. Are you delayed? Probably. I'll no, you're not. Delayed. You're not delayed because if you can hear me, um, then it's fine. So perfect. I think Chris is back, guys. Let's just Wait. continue with this anchor chart, get through this one, and uh, then get back into the live chat. So, yeah, it looks like we've got a bit of resistance up at 2.2 cent on anchor. 2.3 was, uh, you know, our um, our target, so we're just falling short there. Volumes have started to decrease. That's going to allow us to hopefully trade sideways, correct this RSI a little bit further on this four hourly chart. But let's pull it a little bit lower, see what's happening on the hourly view. Here we can see just how recent that pump was up the top there. But the RSI is starting to come down here quite nicely. The volumes are also decreasing a tad. And um, actually, you know, we could potentially just go sideways for a tad here, a little bit longer, get this a little bit lower on the RSI, drop the volume a little bit more, and then hopefully get that swing on the volume, swing on the RSI that might get us above that price point. So Anchor's looking okay. Um, we'll just have to monitor that situation in the next kind of few hours, make sure that we can actually mop that up because uh, I think, yeah, we're definitely looking to, to basically take out that first price point, which will then gear us up towards the three cent level um, for our next um, price target. After that, 3.8 
and then 4.3. So yeah, things are looking pretty good for Anchor. All right, let's pull this back up. Fantastic. So Chris has been able to join us live, which is, you know, it's good. What, I was having so much a, fun without you. <laughs> what a palaver. Like, I cannot explain. I'm going to upgrade my, my internet first thing tomorrow morning. Um, who would have thought that one Teams call could ruin a live stream? Um, I have a very good internet package as well, so, yeah, a little bit wounded. Um, but hey-ho, back and live. Wonderful. Um, have you covered off VeChain? I have not looked at VeChain yet, but um, let's do that one now. Uh, yeah. So, because VeChain's been doing very, very well. So here we go, guys. Right. So you can see on this Fibonacci retracement from the low level of the 23rd of December um, through to that high level uh, here, which was on the 6th of January. The breakout, the brief breakout, the retracement again, and then obviously the, the breakout that we've had recently. So I can't remember when we did our VeChain video. It must have been a couple of days ago. Something yeah, like I that. think so. Yeah, uh, I think it ago. must have been around this point for that breakout. It was such a key thing. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, we actually set our high level here, um, which was the 20th of January. So I stand corrected. 20th of January is the high level from the low level of the 23rd of Jan. Uh, 23rd of December was the low level and the 20th was the high level. Uh, and then we see had the breakout over here, which is, I think, when we did the video. I could be wrong, but I think it was there. Um, and then, yeah, we can see that we had the retest down here on that former high level of 3.4 and then the push up. And we've taken out that first price point, which is fantastic. 4.8 cents is no longer a problem. We're 5.3. We've had a high level today of 5.6. Um, and we've had a bit of a correction. So we can see on this daily chart, the RSI is overbought. Um, we can see that the MACD is you know, parabolic. The volumes for VeChain is just through the roof today, which is really good to see. Um, so we'll have to see, obviously I imagine that's probably cooling off nicely. Um, but let's pull this down into a four hourly view. Um, and we can see that, yeah, literally a red candle today, red volume right now. Someone's dropped a big bag of, of V-Chain there, I feel, Chris. Um, but we can mm. see that the RSI is getting corrected because of it, right? So very much overbought, uh, 87 on the chart. Not the highest we've seen because that fits with Elrond and still sits with Elrond. Um, but yeah, we're cooling off nicely. Currently at 75 on this four hourly chart. Imagine that we're going to get pulled into here. Um, if the volumes can start to seriously decrease from the, where it is at the moment, Maybe we'll get a test on that price point. If we can just get a test on that price point, a bounce from there would be nice to then keep going and keep that momentum strong. Um, so let's pull this down into a one hourly view on VeChain. Um, again, two hours worth of really, really solid selling volume. So people are selling their VeChain bags. So you know, maybe they've accumulated such vast amounts that just all they really needed was five cent, right? Um, so yeah, we're getting corrected on the RSI front now. Ideally, this is just not ideal. We need to get that volume much lower. Um, you know, it'd be nice to be down here in terms of volume. Otherwise, this price is just going to continue a, a downward slide. Um, but the RSI is going to get corrected along with this. So um, now we're no longer overbought. Uh, there's going to be some buying pressure, no doubt, kicking in. But I imagine that we probably want to pull it down towards 50 first. Um, and if we can do that with a decrease in volume, we'll do a minimal amount of damage to the price. Um, so, yeah, I guess uh, if I just pull this to the daily, we can assume that um, we're going to potentially come back down towards 4.8. Hopefully we can test that as good, strong support. Um, and if we can do that, then uh, hopefully the RSI will be corrected by that point. The volumes will be corrected and we can then, you know, bounce up from here to new highs. So the next price target, Chris, that we are actually seeking is obviously 7 cent okay so seven cent is on the cards now that's what we're looking at and then we're talking about nine cent and then ten cent after that so um let's focus on that seven let's get that mopped up your biggest bag isn't it vj and chris so i think um yeah it's gonna be good it's my biggest my biggest bag like it has been for an awful long time but like i think i'm gonna see if i can attempt to to at least match uh one harmony with that but you know over a period of time, right? <laughs> Fantastic. So, Chris, now you've actually joined us, why don't you actually get into the live chat? Yeah, why don't I do that? I'm going to start live rather than going right back. Bear in mind, I'm like half an hour, 35 minutes late for, for the go live. <laughs> um, so I'll start with, uh, with, with Michael's here. Um, can we have a look at the one 
harmony chart and uh, also discuss a cheeky one staking pool. And I think you know we've been talking a little bit today, actually, haven't we, Nick? Around um, you know the one harmony and 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 pools and and that sort of stuff. So uh, should we have a look at the chart first and then? Sort of open up about the pool side of things. <laughs> yeah, we can do. Um, right, yeah. let's uh, let's pull up the, the harmony. This is fantastic. I, I love harmony one. It's just awesome. Um, so I'm still gutted though, Chris. Absolutely devastated that I couldn't get that transaction through when I wanted it to. And now look at the price. Uh, anyway, oh, right. we we have this um, <laughs> this Fibonacci retracement from the 31st of December. Um, through to the high point of the 9th of January. Okay, and uh, for those who don't know, I tried to put a transaction through for One Harmony, I think when it was around here in this particular dip. And uh, the transaction for the love nor money would not go through um, on crypto.com. I was so devastated. I tried two days in a row to try to get it to go through and it just wouldn't go through. And then uh, I just kind of gave up and then the price does this. It's just hard to see. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, um, I've still got a good bag of, of Harmony one. Um, but we have seen some fantastic price movements and we've basically, Chris, <laughs> get this, taken out all of the price targets, all of them. Um, yeah. So, you know, from the matter of where we were, right, and we obviously had that consolidation down here. So um, this was basically 1.1, right? And then we had this this moonshot up here. We took out that um, 1.5 cents. We've taken out the 2.0 cent. Uh, and today we almost took out the 2.3. But that's enough for me to say I'm going to reset this um, Fibonacci um, level and um, th see what else is in store here for Harmony 1. Okay, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this to the high point of today and it might need to adjust it again and I'm going to take it from the low level down here okay so the, now the low level is the 7th of February and the high level is obviously the 12th of February okay so this now gives us some new price targets which I like I like new price targets um, and straight away we can see that we've already taken out the 618 area of our retracement zones okay so um, on here we can see that we've already been down here Okay, we had that high point, we've come back, we actually touched on the 618, we didn't get as low as the 50%, and it started to increase again um, on these dailies. Now, what I can do is just uh, very briefly, it's not much of a trend, but you can see there's an upward trend there, for example, and uh, we can also draw one between here and here, for example. So we know that there's a bit of a trend uh, moving to the upside, I can just see that I'm not actually quite on that line, so I'm just going to correct that a little bit, just about there. Okay, so um, from here we have that first price target of three cent. That's what we're going after right now. We're currently at about 2.1, at least according to this slightly delayed, which is about 20 minutes delay um, on our chart. So let's pull this down into a four hourly view. This is going to show us a little bit more of that sideways trading and what's actually gone on here. We can see that volume build up nicely and it's come down nicely as well. Okay, and it started to pick up uh, a little bit towards the end here in these last few four hours. We were very much overbought, that got corrected down, and uh, we touched on 17, it kind of corrected itself there as well. Okay, so this four hourly chart shows us that the volumes decreased sharply within this zone here, and started to build up a little bit, but recently flattened out. Uh, it has had a bit of a pullback here most recently, time to get that particular red candle. The MACD lines look like they're about to have a positive cross, but that's most likely going to fail. Um, but let's pull this into a one hourly view. Um, from here, we can see, uh, yeah, exactly what, what's going on within uh, those candles. We can see that we were overbought briefly as we entered that space there. Uh, and we've corrected down on this hourly to about 58 on the RSI. The MACD looks like it's about to come back down and cross over as well. Um, the volumes are flat. They're not doing anything amazing. Um, so we could potentially just trade sideways here. And it looks like we have got support in uh, around this level here, this being the 786 um, Fibonacci level. Okay, so we could potentially use that uh, to our advantage to bounce off from there and to move to new heights. So we'll have to see how that plays out. The volumes could do with just decreasing a tad before maybe kicking up again. Um, if that would happen, then we'd correct this RSI again, and that would give us a good shit good moonshot um, to get this up to that next price target. So uh, everything on Harmony 1, Chris, is looking looking pretty good, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the, the progress it's making at the minute. Yeah, I mean, like, to be honest, I'd like it just, you know, from a selfish point of view, slow itself down a little bit, to be honest. I want to get more, uh, and I, th I think, you know, that, that sentiment is, uh, you know, 
the same in the the live chat as well. There's lots of people saying they want to get more and more one. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it is going to do fantastic in the world. And you know, I love how the the founder talks about Harmony One and the fact that you know they kind of they want blockchains to you know interact with one another and you know there's space in 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 the crypto you know sphere for for everybody to to participate and you know inclusion and and all of this sort of stuff uh, you know the usual buzzwords but you know it's fantastic to be hearing it um, and I think you know Harmony One's still got a lot to do. But it's definitely doing all the right things as far as you know. I'm concerned. Um, stiff competition in the respect of like Zilliqa and, and stuff like that. But I think you know they're, they're doing all the right things behind the scenes, and I think it's going to do really, really well. Um, yeah, and that's and, why I want to increase, yeah, increase no, my my yeah my position. Yeah, it's good. So Michael also said I didn't mention the price target. Apologies. Uh, Three cent is the next price target on the map for for One Harmony. Um, and we've got uh, Big Mike here saying he's uh, managed to stake for 30 days on Binance, hoping that we sort out our pool, Chris. And it's funny because uh, I may, I may have started to spin up a Harmony One pool today. Beautiful. Yeah, it's still Beautiful. early stages. It's not up and running fully. Um, but I am, I am working on getting the node up and running so that we can set up a pool for One Harmony. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be able to dedicate and stake into to one harmony which would be fantastic yeah definitely we you know we, we've kind of been looking at it for a while haven't we we wanted to to sort out the cardano one sort of get that you know moving uh, and, and and it's doing really well isn't it nick the the cardano one bearing in mind it's it's only you know recently been set up but we're now we're um 636 000 ada de delegated um which I think is fantastic in such a short space of time. Obviously, still a bit of work to, to do. Uh, if you're not delegating your, your ADA, uh, do check out the the, the pool uh, under the ticker cheek, uh, and you can do that from you know the the usual um, wallet, your Deadliest wallet, your Yore wallet, um, Atomic wallet, and ADA Lite as well. Fantastic. Super. Okay. Um, right. What else we got here? Three hundred K one. Uh, is that enough? <laughs> it depends on what your objectives are at the end, right? Yeah, I mean, just just have a look at like what V Chain's done over the recent weeks, right? Because you know, it, in my opinion, and you know, we're yet to to see this happen, but you know, you'll you'll kind of see sort of the evolution very similar to to what XLM did. You know, you get to the the seven cent, you're then get to like 17 cent and you know in time it will it will do the same as some of these others uh, you know in in terms of price discovery and I, I kind of feel like one will will be the same right um, so yeah 300 K we're in like super early to one um, you know people are going to start to talk about it more and then more people are going to start to get into it so you know again same with anchor as well Nick isn't it you know, again, yeah, another Anchor's got some well. awesome stuff going on. I was on their mm. website earlier, Chris, because, um, you know, they basically allow people to spin up pools for various different projects, don't they? And um, Harmony One isn't on their list, which is it's a bit unfortunate. It would have saved me a bit of time. But um, yeah, yeah, they do some fantastic things. Like if you wanted to run a pool for Algorand, for example, not a pool, but if you wanted to run uh, a node for Algorand or a relay node, then you could just go to Anchor and actually spin uh, an Algorand node up uh, very, very quickly. Um, so they've got lots of awesome stuff going on with Anchor. So I think Anchor is going to be one to watch in the future as well. An Anchor, in my opinion, is going to do some amazing things, Nick. And um, yeah, I think it it will be one of those where you start to see the the big crypto channels start to talk about it as a as it you know comes onto to their radar. Um, if it hasn't already, that is. Um, but I haven't seen anybody talking about it at great length just yet. Um, but it will be happening, mark my words, because, mm. again, I think it's a really good one. But go do your own research. Like we always say, guys, it's just our opinion. Uh, unlike many others, you know, we're just giving you our honest opinions. We're not paid by any project to, to talk about it. Um, the projects scrolling across the screen are the ones that we're invested in. And, and, and on that note, Nick, um, yeah, you know, I did exit my position in uh, Avalanche uh, the the other day. Um, 
it was brought to my attention that obviously they're having some difficulties. It looks like they've resolved those, but I don't really like difficulties when it comes to, to networks and stuff like that. So it always makes me a little bit nervous. So I did exit. Um, and, and that's fine to do that, guys. Like if you, you hear about problems and you're unsure, it's better to lock in those, those profits, exit. You can always get back in, right? Um, I'm still yet to decide whether I'm going back in or not. I need to find out a little bit more about the, the actual issues. Um, obviously, they've done the PR side of things, but it'll be interesting to see what actually happened behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, not that I'm saying that they, they would be dishonest, but I like to always double check. Is there anything you want to talk about for, for that, Nick? Um, no, I'm just updating the tickers, actually. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, um, that are scrolling yeah. on the page because... Um... I think some of them just needed a bit of a refresh. Yeah, um, cool. Um, right, what else we got? So we've got lots of people, lots of anchor. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to do well, guys. I really do. Um, very good buys, in my opinion, one and anchor. Um, uh, any thoughts on ORN protocol? Have you looked at this one, Nick, uh, previously? It it's not one I've looked at. ring a bell, no. I'll, uh, I'll log it down. We will take a look. Um, so that's uh, locked in. Um, what else we got? Can you have a look at Aquaplus Live DeFi on Polkadot under two million market cap? We can have a look at it for sure. Let me, uh, yeah, log make that some notes down for sure. Yeah. We've got lots of projects, guys, to to cover off. We will. Mm -hmm. uh, get through a few of them this weekend, that's for sure. Um, what else we got? Um, yeah, there's just so many projects, isn't there, that people are talking about. Yeah, Crypto Plan, I've, I've taken a note of your one as well, my friend. Well, there we go, it's like another another free to the list, Nick. Um, <laughs> H Chris recommend, sorry, go on, HBAR. Yeah, 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 it's just comments, that's all. Uh, okay. Um, Chris, recommend uh, recommendation for Cardano wallet, please. Um, if I'm honest, m like the one that I use is the the Euro wallet, but the the Atomic wallet looks pretty good, doesn't it, Nick? The Atomic wallet is definitely very very good. Yeah, I do like the Atomic wallet, but I like the safety of the Euro wallet. Yeah, yeah. It depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for a wallet where you can put multiple assets in. And still feel fairly comfortable with it. Atomic Wallet would probably be the the one of choice for me. Um, but if you you're purely about safety, um, which is why I use the Euro Wallet, um, I can do it through my ledger, right? Um, and safety is definitely key for me. Um, but yeah, for me it'd be a, a you know it'd be between one of those two wallets. Um, you know, I am using uh, the the Celsius app as well at the moment. Um, I'm happy with that also. You, know, you get some some decent rewards. It's pretty good, but you, you can't really delegate from it as such. Um, so yeah, it's not the returns aren't always as good. Um, all right, what else we got? Um, have we had a look at, at Elrond, Nick? Um, not today. So I can I can do that. I can bring up the, the Elrond. Yeah, because um... to be honest, this one hasn't been doing too great the last few days, and um, yeah. I think there's a few people that are nervous. Um, okay, I wouldn't necessarily be nervous. This is what we've been waiting for for a while, guys. Yeah. So um, when we were riding all of this all the way to the top here, one thing that we were, were really talking about is we didn't know where to place the top of our Fibonacci retracements, right? Because we needed a red day. We needed a red candle to come in here to show us where the top was, right? And we got that, okay? And uh, in doing so, we could see that we bounced off the 702 we can see it on this particular candle here um, and we obviously had this red candle here appear right and um, this actually brought us down to the 618 and uh, today we actually took that back up again past the 702 so if we can close up here past that 702 i think we're going to go ahead and then close the 786 uh, and then go ahead and take out the 214 dollar range and go to the next price target one thing that we needed was a retracement. We needed the retracement to happen to correct the overbought situation that we've been in for a little while here. Okay, we didn't even get this down out of the over overbought area, Chris. Uh, we got close, it got down to 72, uh, and then we've had a green day and it's just pulled it right back up again. 
but the volumes have been decreasing, okay, which is good. So the volumes have been corrected. Um, the uh, you know, RSI is being corrected. It could mean that we can go up to a higher swing again because this thing got up all the way up to 97, right? And now we're down here at 76. A bigger correction would have been nice to get it back down here like in this zone. And that would have been nice to have done, but we haven't got that far. So um, looking at this, I think we're probably, that would be it now. I don't think we're gonna have too much more on this chart, but let's pull it down into a four hourly view. And we can see that, yeah, we really came down here, tested this area, and that was now getting some good movement to this upside. Uh, so a good close up here on the daily uh, will be nice. And if we can then push that up a little bit higher, into that 786 and maybe we can then correct the RSI again by retesting that 786. Um, even if we could just retest the 702, that would be nice. Um, on this four hourly chart, the RSI is heavily corrected. It's now uh, up here at 55, right? And um, got down to 45. Um, so that's actually looking really good. The volumes are decreasing enough and actually increased a little bit and decreased again. So volume wise, it's good. RSI on the four hourly is good. MACD is gonna follow whatever the RSI does, so it's irrelevant. Um, if we pull this down into a one hourly view, shows us, yeah, so this is exactly what we're seeing, right? So we got down on this hourly view to oversold area, okay? Um, the volumes at that point weren't exactly amazing, but they really kicked in nice and strong. They started to decrease again. The volumes are decreasing again. RSI is actually getting quite high. It's back at 60 now on the hourly view. Um, and that's as we're pushing up past that 702 area. So volumes are starting to increase on this hourly by hour, right? But uh, we'll have to see if that can maintain, if we can get the volume kicking in now um, and getting the close up here, um, that's gonna be really good. RSI is at 61 or so. Pull this back up into that daily view. So in reality, we're down here on the RSI. Uh, we have volumes that are starting to increase on the hourly view. And um, yeah, I think that might have been it, Chris, that 618 retracement zone. And um, I think that might start seeing some progression back to the upside. Yeah, I kind of feel with this one, right, we, we were talking about it. We did a video, right, and we got a bit of stick from some of the the, the guys, the Elrond sort of uh, maximalists that are out there. Um, you know, that we weren't saying it was going to, to some really ridiculous prices. I think we, we called sort of four to, to five hundred dollars, didn't we? Um but but the words of choice where we, we will see it go to, to those prices this year, right? Um, not that that was the, the top of you know and what was only possible this year. Um but yeah there's that they, they those individuals were getting a bit of stick today. Um you know what's going on and there was a lot of panic around and there is no need to be panicking um but i do kind of feel that some of the maximalists that are coming out with like ten thousand by the end of the year and silly figures like this um you know have caused a little bit of panic but you know where there's fear what do we like to do nick oh we buy up that bit we buy it we as buy much up. as we can um so I, I still think the project's really good guys like um hmm. fundamentally it's, it's definitely there there are a few obvious concerns such as who holds the most e-gold and out in the world and all that stuff um but nonetheless you know um you know 308 dollars is the first price target okay now we found the top so $308.44 is the first price target, and we should pretty see that pretty quickly, I would have thought. It didn't take a lot of time to get up to here from where it was. Second price target, $460, okay? And then the third price target comes in at $612 and then 705 after that. So um, yeah, we could see all of that happen very, very quickly uh, under the right conditions. Uh, and it might take a little bit of time. It might just take one out, get a bit of a retracement, then go and take the second one out, get a bit of a retracement and so forth, right? But uh, if, if we look at the One Harmony example, right, where it didn't even have any of that, it kind of took them all out, right? I actually reset this already, but um, it took them all out very, very quickly. And so, yeah, it, it can happen very, very quickly or it could take a little bit of time. But um, I think we've had that that 618s come in. I don't think it's going to, it's not, it's not showing any signs of going lower than 618. So right now, I think, um, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. And, and, you know, when we were talking about this, we were saying that it can't, you know, we, well, first of all, we were saying we haven't seen a chart like it. <laughs> I you mean, know. it's been overbought for a very long time and it's reached those really high levels of overbought as well. And mm. it stayed there. Um, mm. Yeah. And, and that's something that we hadn't seen 
Um, so, you know, it was bound to happen. It was expected. It's healthy. Um, it's definitely an opportunity, uh, in my opinion, to, to you know, buy up some of that fear, um, not financial advice. Um, but, you know, for, for me, it, it's an opportunity here. I still look at it and feel that it's undervalued massively. Um, and, and others are going to be looking at it the same way. Um, you know, to be honest, whilst everybody's been looking at the likes of VeChain, Elrond, and uh, and some of these others, uh, the graph was would, would be another one that's done fantastically well. Um, I've been looking at that one because I, I'm still looking at it and thinking, yeah, that's still a good still a good opportunity uh, to to stack there. Um, another question here from David, one of our members. Um, have we minted our first block in the cheek pool yet? So we haven't. Um, However, with that said, um, when we went into the last epoch, we only had, what was it, about 300 or 280k uh, delegated. Um, um, we're now, 300 it was, yeah. Was it 300, yeah? It was around that sort of figure. We're now at 636 delegated. So when we go into the next epoch, we've got double the chance, right? So, um, yeah, it, it's looking positive. And I think once we've done that first one, right, you know that there isn't many people in the pool, so the rewards should be shared. Um, should be should be pretty good. I think we've got mm. about 81 people delegating. Um, so you know the rewards would be shared by you know around a, a smaller pool of people, if that makes sense. Um, super. Okay, let's move on. I do like Elrond, as you're, you're aware. I do think it's going to do super well. Um, and if you're worried, I wouldn't be. Um, just give it some time. Right, it's healthy. Um, Hey Nick and Chris, uh, looking good. The bicep, uh, Paul, great to have you with us. Uh, John, appreciate that. Um, okay, we got. Uh, can we? Um, will you tap into the link? Can we have a look at the link? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh... Again, I think I think this is one I haven't looked at it today, but I have heard that it's 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 done pretty well. Yeah, cool. So because obviously I haven't looked at links since everything got reset. <laughs> it's been a while, right? It's been a while. Um, right, so I'm going to just give me a second to just find the place. Okay, here. Right, we're going to take this high point and this low point. Okay, cool. So this is going to be just our Fibonacci retracement. And um, what I've done here is I've taken the high level um, just up here, okay, this one, and uh, that was the 10th of January, and the low level is on the 23rd of December. I'm just going to make sure I get that where I need it. Right, and uh, what we can see is we saw the rally to the top side and the correction. The correction actually came down to the lowest point uh, on the Fibonacci retracement zone down here. Okay, that was the, uh, I think it's the 382 level, okay. And um, from here, we obviously tested on the 50% on the way up as well. Um, so we had the pullback, the retest on the 50, uh, the comeback up from here. We kind of skipped out a little bit on that 618, but the 702 got hit out as well. We could see that from this particular candle. Once we got that in, we closed above the 786 and we really moved it on up. Now we got close to the first price point of $24 um, and that failed. We came back down, retesting the former high level $18 pushed on up, cleared that first price point again um, of $24. Had a correction down here, about 50% of that retracement. Okay, so yeah, that to there to there is about 50% approximately. And then rallied up again. We found good um, uh, resistance here, really, um, up at this price point of $24. And since then, we've actually rallied up and flipped it into support. And you can see it from this particular green candle here. All of these wicks that were struggling to get through, um, and then we bounced right off of it on this particular day. So on the 8th of February, we bounced up from there, and we've been heading on towards the second price target, Chris. That second price target, guys, is 33 dollars and 26 cents and so we're getting good motion there to move that to the upside so and um, we can see the volume is quite volatile um so what i'm going to do is just move that out of the way so you can see the the volumes here we can see they're a bit all over the place and not exactly a clean uh run on the daily chart so we'll have a look and see if that actually makes more sense from the four hourly and the hourly views uh the macd is being crisscrossing and ultimately yeah the rsi 
has um, has been heading up now towards overball and it's just about touching that line. Um, but ultimately this thing hasn't actually been up here um, since August, okay? And we saw what happened in August up here. So um, we'll have to see and wait and see for what happens in that. So let's pull this into our four hourly view for chain link here. Um, the volumes are starting to make more sense when we look at it from this point of view. We can start to see how that's actually kind of had a bit of a motion um, like this, right? So we can see that actually happening. Um, so that makes more sense. We can see the volume increasing as we get these candles heading towards that next price target. Um, from here, we can see the MACD is obviously positive as we became um, overbought. And that movement here ultimately has driven that MACD response. Um, so yeah, everything's looking okay actually on this four hourly chart. Um, overbought, so potentially expect a bit of a correction to the downside. At least that seems to be the, the habit here. We get to this point and we have a correction. We get to this point, we have a correction. We get to this point, we have a correction, right? Um, so it's doing kind of like a rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat scenario. Um, so now we're up here again, I expect a correction, okay? And um, we could expect it probably to come down to that other high level here of this particular day. So we'll just take that as an example of about $28.32 around there. Um, potentially that's what you might be looking at as a correction for this RSI. Um, but it will be volume driven uh, and volume specific. But let's pull it into a one hour view and make sure that uh, we're doing much the same. We're trading sideways as we are overbought here. This is not a good indication if the volumes are not um, increasing, they're flattening out. Then this is going to get corrected very fast. I would have thought that's potentially the end of this high level of correction is most likely going to have to happen and pull this RSI back down. Um, but I anticipate that that's actually going to be somewhere around the $28 and uh probably yeah 28.52 something like that in that range so yeah maybe a two dollar drop from where it is on my chart at the minute obviously this is not the most live so i can pull this up here and just take a look at chain link um it's currently at 30 dollars and 49 um so i'd anticipate that we're going to get a bit of a correction to pull that down maybe you'll lose two dollars off this level here um that would correct the rsi then you'd get hopefully a kick in the volume a kick in the uh, RSI to pull that back to the upside. Um, but it looks like it's gonna be running out of steam really soon. Um, just from the history of this, it doesn't stay up here overbought for very long, uh, not without serious volume. Um, so if I just try to find some spikes in volume like this, uh, where you can start staying up here a bit longer. But otherwise, I would be expecting this thing to, to potentially come back down. Um, not by much, a couple of dollars maybe. Um, and then, yeah, you, that should hopefully correct the volume, correct the RSI, um, and then get you up to the next level. So if I pull this back to that daily, um, yeah, I think uh, a slight pullback by a couple of dollars, um, and then maybe you will be then have enough steam to get us over the mark for that 33.26. Um, that's what my thoughts are on Chainlink, Chris. Super. Sounds good. I had somebody reach out to me today, actually, and they were a little bit concerned that it wasn't you know, going to go too much further. And, you know, I think a little bit differently, to be fair. Um, but there is a lot of competition starting to, to sort of uh, come into that space, right? API free, you got Band. Um, there's, there's a few others as well. But, yeah, Band's been doing particularly well also. Um, seller. Uh, network, not one that I've looked at. Uh, made a note, so we will we will have a butchers at that one. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on on the live streams and uh, videos and stuff. We'll definitely cover that. That's for sure. So, so, so Chris, did you did you snap someone away? I did. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> it, I think it was a bot. To be fair, Nick, it yeah. was just <laughs> a bot in the chat talking about Bitcoin. Um, yeah, they're gone. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. And Chris, we've been online for about an hour now. Could you believe it? Time has just flown by. I mean, I know you've only been here for half an hour, but... Yeah, I know. It feels <laughs> like I've only been here about 30 minutes, Nick, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I have. <laughs> um, what do you want to do? One more chart and then... I think so, yeah, because um, yeah. we want to get some good videos out, I think, for tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I've already got an idea for one. It's going to be good. <laughs> um, okay, so have we done ADA? Have we done? Yes, we did ADA earlier. We did, we did ADA. You, you, well, I did. Um, you did. <laughs> well, you, you all did. I wasn't present. Yeah, um, we we already did it, Chris. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, there's lots of there's lots of options here, Nick. I'll let you pick. So we've got Theater, AGI, Zill, ETH, uh, XRP, XLM. Mm. 
Tell you what, AGI is doing really well at the minute. Let's take a look at AGI. Super. All right, let's, let's take a cheeky look at this fantastic parabolic move by, uh, by SingularityNet. So SingularityNet is moving to Cardano and uh, that's fantastic. Um, so they're gonna be minting 1 billion AGI ADA versions, um, okay? So they're gonna be in addition to the Ethereum ERC20 versions of um, you know, the, the token. And uh, I think a lot of people are just going to automatically transfer and convert their uh, standard uh, Ethereum AGI tokens over to the Cardano version, because that's exactly what I intend to do. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, be the holder of a, uh, an ERC20, um, you know, Ethereum token. So I'm going to be going over to Cardano once they get those minted. They're going to be distributing those over a 99 year period. So it's not a drop of 1 billion on the market scenario. 15 million gets um, distributed straight away. And then there's going to be a certain percentage every year for like 100 years, pretty much. Um, so that's going to be awesome. And I think that's really helped bolster the price up here as well as obviously being a bull market. The fantastic news has definitely helped. So we can see that uh, we've taken out, Chris, two of the price targets for AGI very quickly here. The 13 cent um, is taken out. We've got that one already. And um, we're up here at 18.3 cent and we've taken that one out as well. So a good close here on this particular candle is gonna do really, really well. Volumes were going up um, and have started to decrease, um, but we are overbought as well on this um, AGI chart. So what we're gonna do is pull this down to a four hour view. Um, here we can see that move to that upside and how much we are actually overbought currently on this four hourly chart. Um, so we do need a little bit of a correction like this to correct our RSI. And so most likely we're gonna get that soon um, as we are overbought and we have been overbought for a little while now. The volumes are starting to decrease, but also slightly flattening at the end here. Um, so that's gonna start hurting our price. Um, ideally, what was keeping us going so well was the decreasing volume, um, but we need to obviously decrease that volume with doing minimal amount of price damage um, so we can correct the RSI um, come back down into here so that we can push it back up into overbought area as well. So things are not looking too bad, but we just want to see that volume improve as well. So let's take this down into a one hourly view, make sure that everything is still going to plan. Here we can see the volume has started to decrease, but it's still flattening out in the last three hours. So we could do with it being a little bit lower than that, but we are no longer overbought. So at least that's a positive sign. So the correction really came in over here, right? So we're overbought up in this section. We had that uh, baby correction just there, it's barely a correction at all, but it was enough to swing this RSI from you know the 86 level to the 56 level, okay? So we're able to lose a significant amount and that gave us the motion to the upside that we've seen here without actually going majorly overbought at any one situation or any one point in time. So right now we're uh, we're basically on that 70 line and we could see you know some volume come in possibly to actually continue this price rise to the next level which would be fantastic. So so far on this RSI it's not as uh, not as impressive as this swing where we have it from that low point up to there. Um, but uh, we still have had significant price movement with minimal amount of uh, RSI damage. Um, because the volumes have been, you know, going in our favor. So as long as that continues and we have the volume going good, the RSI can continue to do what it's doing and our price will continue to move to the upside. Um, but let's pull this up into a one day view again. And um, so we can take a look at what the next price target is, right? So the next price target here for AGI is 22.8 cents. And then after that, 25.6. Okay, and I still don't think that's the limit for this year. That's um, just what I've shown on here. And ultimately, I could reset this Fibonacci once more um, to show the next, um, you know, parabolic rise and correction. So um, I think AGI is doing really, really well, Chris. And I think it's definitely still something that's long term. But um, it, you're going to, you know, if you're fortunate enough to get in, I think you've got some fantastic tokens. And um, be mindful that if you have the current versions, the uh, Ethereum versions, you might want to also convert those over to the um, to the AGI version once they get minted, Chris. Yeah, brilliant. I, I'll be told there's another bot in the the live the live chat. Screw in the tuna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Made me laugh. Brilliant. Right. Um, so I guess if you haven't mashed the like button already, please do so. <laughs> 
Am Basically, I out of sync again? You are out of sync again. And if you want to keep Chris in sync, then do go ahead and smash that like button. By smashing that like button, rumour has it that Chris becomes live once again. Um, but other than that, you know, it just, just shows us your appreciation for the stream. If you have enjoyed tonight's stream, found it useful and informative, maybe even rather entertaining, um, then do go ahead and smash that like button on the way out. Uh, Chris really appreciates it. I really appreciate it. And I think the whole cheeky crypto community really appreciates it. And if by chance you're new to the channel and not yet subscribed, do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the videos and live streams that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And with all of this said and done, we hope you have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Take care. <laughs>